Staying in the same location provided greater stability, greater security. Even though they still feared nature, the settlers tried to avoid and protect themselves against its excesses and to make their lives more predictable. withstood wind and fire. Skin tents were not as resistant. knew that they could lose everything overnight, that life was precarious. What was there yesterday might not be there tomorrow. This uncertainty was precisely what sedentary peoples tried to ward off. Faced with chaos, the sedentary way of life was a reassuring, organized, and stable solution. Security wields a tremendous seductive power over men and women. In the Fertile Crescent, the hunter-gatherers gradually settled in on a permanent basis. Eleven thousand years ago, at the heart of the Fertile Crescent stands a monument reminiscent of Stonehenge in England. But it is six thousand years older, even more impressive, and artistically more elaborate. It is Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. A sanctuary built by hunter-gatherers. A place of pilgrimage to honor the ancestors. Megaliths that stand five meters tall. These stones form a series of concentric circles. 250 stele are still buried underground. At first glance, the sheer size of the work is staggering. Erecting this site required the work, collaboration, and ingenuity of hundreds of men who needed to be housed and fed. For the time, a project of titanic proportions. Klaus Schmidt of the Berlin Archaeological Institute is overseeing the dig. From the botanical remains, we can understand that the society in this time still was on the level of hunter-gatherers. So that's surprising. We, we would expect maybe settled societies, uh, farming societies, uh, which have, have the power to, uh, the manpower to do such things. But it still was on the level of hunter-gatherers. That was a, a surprising result of the excavations. Before the discovery of Gobekli Tepe, it was not believed that hunter-gatherers could build such a monumental work, requiring such substantial technical knowledge. For scientists, Gobekli Tepe is the product of a complex social organization, bringing together many villages across a vast territory. It is a society united by the same beliefs and capable of rallying hundreds of workers around a common goal. Very organized hunter-gatherers. The main characteristic of Gobekli Tepe are these stone circles made of pillars, pillar-like uh, uh, megalithic stones with a height of four to five meter and a weight of five, five to, to ten tons. So they are really megalithic stones and they have a typical shape, a T form. 
And we can understand this form very well because some of the pillars have arms and fingers, hands and fingers. So we clearly can understand them as anthropomorphic, as human-shaped. Animals are engraved on these human-shaped megaliths. Foxes, boars, serpents, a real zoo. Ian Hodder of Stanford University in San Francisco sees in this a significant shift in mindset. There are lions and uh, deer and cat cattle and also scorpions and spiders and all sorts of things. Uh, but these are on the human. And so the human has become central. And I think that is the most, most important shift that we see because it's only when humans become central to the natural world and become able to dominate animals that they can domesticate animals. At Gobekli Tepe, archaeologists also found pieces of human statues. And in the nearby village of Urfa, they found a fully intact human statue almost two meters tall. It is the oldest one in the world. The fertile crescent hunter-gatherers had taken a great step forward. Previously, they had only depicted the animals they hunted and venerated. Now, Homo sapiens dared to represent himself. Man had become aware of his own power over nature. He venerated himself. Man had risen. It was the rise of man. Let's go back 9,500 years. In the Fertile Crescent, the modest hamlets had grown into large villages where hundreds of men and women lived. They still lived from hunting and gathering. The walls of houses were now made in bricks of raw clay, a material that is easy to handle. The architecture had changed. The houses were now rectangular. relative. Une maison circulaire, on ne peut pas trop la grandir, donc on est obligé de faire d'autres maisons circulaires, d'autres cases, d'autres pièces, exactement sur le même modèle. Au contraire, la maison quadrangulaire, on peut la découper, on peut la grandir en ajoutant de nouveaux cubes. Donc, peut-être qu'à ce moment-là, on passe d'un système qui était jusqu'à présent plutôt collectif à un système plutôt familial, avec une appropriation plus, plus particulière de ce que l'on possède. Et donc, il faut toujours s'imaginer que derrière ces changements architecturaux, il y a à la fois des changements de mentalité et des changements de société. The family was the social cell. The nuclear family and the extended family, including aunts, uncles and cousins. These families gathered together in tribes. Blood ties were important. To find a wife, no need to look elsewhere in another band. A mate could be living in the same village. This is the major change. Instead of smaller sites that prevailed in the Paleolithic, you suddenly have your whole community living together. So it's the agglomeration, the clustering of all those wandering beds of bands of hunters gatherers that belong to your tribe. The people with whom you had communication over large distances in order to mate with them, suddenly they become all inhabitants in one place. Take it. 